Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. This week I was supposed to be recording a video for the Deep Sky Videos YouTube channel. I was all rearing to go to talk about the amazing Messier M82 galaxy until I was told that actually this galaxy had already been shown on a previous video several years ago. So as not to waste all the research that I've already gone and done, in this week's video, I'll be talking about ultra luminous X-ray sources, which are a highlight of the M82 galaxy. So let's begin. Ultraluminous X-ray sources, or ULXs for short, are, as the name suggests, really bright X-ray emitting sources. They're not as bright as AGN, the active supermassive black holes found at the center of galaxies, but still, they're extremely bright. What makes ULXs so interesting to astronomers, however, is that physically, they should not exist. ULXs are so bright that they exceed what we call the Eddington limit. The Eddington limit tells us what the maximum brightness a source can be given its mass. Basically, the mass of the source determines the amount of gravity that is holding this source together. The photons emitted by the source exerts an outward radiation pressure and hence a counteracting force to gravity. If the radiation pressure is much larger than the gravitational force, then the entire object would just radiate away. There just wouldn't be strong enough gravity to hold the object together. ULXs have brightnesses that exceed the limit that is possible for their mass to keep them together. not completely clear how this could be possible, but scientists have several theories. One obvious one is that the calculations made on the source assume that the radiation is isotropic. It's radiating in all directions equally. Now this may or may not be true, it might just appear that way due to geometrical effects. For example, if the source radiation is strongly beamed, we see this often in black holes where radiation is observed from powerful jets that arise from the funneling of infalling material along magnetic field lines. Since larger mass objects also allow us to have higher Eddington limits, black holes are the most likely face behind the ULX. However, in the case of the M82 galaxy, one of these sources, M82 X2, we know for sure was not a black hole. And this is because the scientists observed the source flashing every 1.37 seconds. Not only that, but the flashing would change every two and a half days. In order to explain the flashing, the scientists realized that this source could only be a pulsar. Pulsars are highly magnetized rotating compact stars, typically a neutron star or a white dwarf. These are aftermaths of the death of a star. Pulsars emit beams of electromagnetic radiation from radio to gamma ray wavelengths out of their magnetic poles. When the beam is directed right at us, we get a flash of radiation. The pulsars flash at very regular intervals, just like a lighthouse, and these pulses of radiation are incredibly precise, happening within seconds or even sometimes millisecond intervals. The reason that the pulses are changing every 2.5 days is most likely because the pulsar is in a close binary orbit with a massive star. It's orbiting it every 2.5 days. Scientists have calculated the mass of the pulsar to be 1.4 times the mass of our sun, but shining at almost 5 million times brighter. And its companion star is likely to be a 5.4 solar mass object. This could then be the explanation, the root cause behind the beamed emission. The pulsar could be accreting material off the massive star, feeding and fueling the bright emissions. And we see this often in black holes. You may have noticed that M82 has another ULX. In fact, this one, M82X1, can get a thousand times brighter than M82X2. 
Although M82X1 is a traditional ULX source, aka a black hole, what's interesting about it is that scientists believe it could be an intermediate mass black hole. If you remember from my previous videos about the black hole mass gap, which is linked up here if you haven't, intermediate, intermediate mass, mass black holes are extremely rare. Astronomers have so far found loads of small stellar mass black holes. These are the ones that are the result of the death of a massive star. And they've also found loads of supermassive black holes, those that live at the center of galaxies. But there doesn't seem to be anything in between. This is known as the black hole mass gap. Now, M82X1 may or may not be an intermediate mass black hole because scientists haven't been able to measure its mass very well. This is typically done by measuring how the luminosity or brightness of the black hole scales with the temperature. A higher mass black hole have cooler temperatures because the black hole event horizon, the region of no return where not even light can escape, is much bigger. This means that the accretion rate at which the black hole feeds is much less violent and hence it's colder. My friend once told me that imagine a star getting sucked into a three kilometer size hole and then imagine the same star getting sucked into a three million kilometer size hole. That's the difference between getting pulled into a stellar size black hole and a super massive black hole. In the latter, you wouldn't really feel it or notice that you were getting pulled in at all. The discovery of an ultra luminous pulsar has implications for the understanding of the ULX population. It's highly uncertain what fraction of ULXs are powered by neutron stars and pulsars or those that are powered by black holes. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe.